So, topic for today, last topic yeah, of our course of the theory of the state and law. And the name of this topic, democracy, rule of law, and welfare state. Democracy, rule of law, and welfare state. And you know, yeah, the translation of these all terms, yeah, and even welfare state. Perfect. Uh, questions? Questions? Uh, democracy, of course, its notion and forms, yeah, it, its notion and forms, or definition and forms. Then, next question, the origin and essence of the rule of law, or maybe uh, the idea of the rule of law, or of the principle of the rule of law, yeah. Then, next question, legal state. Of course, we should speak about legal state too. And last question will be about welfare state. I think you you know something about democracy, yeah? And uh, what can we read in our constitution, constitution of Ukraine? That Ukraine is... Yeah, uh, and uh, this situation uh, we can see in many other constitutions, yeah, not only in the uh, constitution of Ukraine. Uh, and the, this uh, constitution claims the democratic character of our state uh, and uh, even principles of uh, rule of law. Yeah, we can see in our constitution and even welfare state too. Yeah, all of these ideas we can see in our Ukrainian uh, constitution or constitution of Ukraine. So what is the term democracy? I'm sure that you can uh, explain what is democracy or maybe you remember uh, the etymology of this word. Demos and Kratos from Latin, yeah? And how can we translate Demos? Yeah, people. Mm -hmm. And mm, people, yeah, and Kratos, rule of or uh, power, yeah? Okay, perfect. And uh, literally, uh, this term means rule by the people yeah rule by the people so uh, and here i should say that democracy is the method of collective decision yeah method of the collective decision uh, by equal participants of the group yeah uh, because of this method of course we can uh, decide something yeah and uh, this um, and decisions uh, will be collected. The democracy has an advantage. Uh, I think you know about these advantages, yeah? Or maybe you know something about the disadvantages of democracy or not. What do you think? Advantages and disadvantages. Or maybe we can't say about any advantages. Of democracy. Okay, maybe about uh, firstly about advantage. Yeah, uh, why it's uh, it has some uh, advantages because it forces decision makers to take into account the interests. Yeah, the interests, not only interests but rights and opinions of most people. Yeah, uh, I think it's the best characteristic of democratic and we can use this method of uh, the ruling, yeah, and uh, of the making decisions, uh, not only in our state, yeah, but where? Democratic method 
of some making an action, why not then? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, referenda, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, in just any organization, yeah, any organization, or even of some group of people, for example, in your group, yeah, would we use such method or not? But you didn't, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why? <laughs> It's not so popular for you. Uh, we haven't what? Ah, we, we just uh, we just don't try. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I think it's a good idea. <laughs> the democracy. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll hope that it will be a good um, example of this trying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then, since democracy uh, gives some political power to everyone, yeah, more opinions are taken into account than under aristocracy or monarchy, yeah, and that is why maybe democracy is so popular, yeah, uh, because, of course, uh, when somebody think, uh, thinks that uh, um, he or she can do something, yeah, or rule uh, in some society. Of course, it's interesting, yeah. Okay, then uh, the democracy is generally more reliable in uh, helping participants discover right decisions. Uh, that is why uh, it thought to be the best decision-making method. Yeah, I hope uh, you can agree with me <laughs> that this is the best decision-making method. Then, since, since democracy brings a lot of people into the process of decision-making, it can take advantage of many sources of information and critical assessment of laws and policies. Yeah, uh, when everyone um, can um, uh, estimate yeah, uh, some uh, processes in politics, yeah, or anywhere of, for example, laws, I think it's a very good idea because uh, it's mm, more comfortable for every person, yeah, for every person. Okay, democratic uh, decision-making tends to be more informed than other forms uh, about the interests of uh, citizens. Mm, I think you can understand these moments. And while the term democracy is typ typically used uh, in the context of uh, political state, the democratic uh, principles are also applicable to other bodies, uh, and I said uh, something about some bodies, uh, for example, such as uh, intergovernmental organizations, uh, non-governmental even, uh, yeah, organizations, mm, labor unions, uh, for example, yeah, uh, industry, trade groups, professional bodies, and, and so on. And even in scientific societies, yeah? I think uh, it's a good idea to be in uh, the society with such democratic methods, yeah, of ruling. Okay, today the term democracy is often used to refer to liberal democracy liberal democracy uh, maybe no uh, such term yeah liberal or oh, you've heard just such term liberal uh, liberal democracy and the term liberal means um maybe you know what does it mean this term liberal <laughs> you know uh, you heard but you don't know the definition yeah of this term yeah, uh, free or liberty, yeah, liberty of people. Uh, so, 
a liberal democracy means respect, respectful of individual uh, liberty and property. Yeah, individual liberty and property. Uh, you can, yes, you can write if you don't know this, or you can just uh, note, yes, <laughs> in your uh, memory this moment. I think it's important. And um, it should be known uh, that democracy may be illiberal as well. Yeah, not only liberal um, democracy can exist. Of course, you can speak about illiberal democracy too. Why not? For example, um, uh, we can speak about the uh, democracy of Soviet type. Yeah, Soviet type. Uh, it wasn't liberal. Yeah, but we said, yes, it's democracy. Yeah, and uh, we can read in uh, a constitution, yeah, or the Soviet Union that, uh, yes, it's democracy. Uh, but it was not liberal, it was illiberal democracy. So, uh, the features, yeah, the features of the liberal democracy. What is this? Some features. Uh, maybe you know these features, uh, but I'll say. Uh, firstly, uh, we should speak here about free and fair elections. Yeah? Free and fair elections, of course. Then, the protection of liberty. The protection of liberty. I mean here, for example, uh, the protection of freedom of speech, yeah? um, freedom of assembly, freedom of the religion, um, and of course, property. Freedom of property. Yeah? Uh, and especially the private property. Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting for all citizens uh, in any country. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, next uh, feature of liberal democracy, the rule of law. The rule of law. Then, maybe you know, the division of what <laughs> of powers yeah the division of powers and the protection of min minorities yeah the protection of minorities of course the opinion of uh, um all the people is very important yeah uh, but in liberal democracy of course we should protect the opinion of minorities too. Uh, this is the um, great characteristic, I think, of the liberal democracy. And uh, conversely, an illiberal democracy is one uh, where the liberal freedoms are either non-existent or non-enforced. For example, uh, Napoleon III uh, used such a democratic instrument as a plebiscite yeah? uh, to ratify his imperial decisions. Yeah? Plebiscite. Uh, what is this? Do you know? Yeah. So? It's maybe like a kind of... Uh... Referenda, yeah, referenda or election, yeah, something like this. And it's the characteristic of illiberal democracy, yeah. Okay, you can understand this, and it's just perfect. Then, uh, the democracy may function both uh, in direct and representative forms. Do you remember this idea, yeah, direct de democracy and representative democracy. And now we'll speak about this idea. So what is the direct democracy? We spoke uh, something about uh, these ideas at our previous lectures, yeah? But again, direct democracy is largely referred to the political system where the citizens vote on all major policy decisions, yeah? And it is called direct because 
there are no intermediaries uh, in the decision-making process. So uh, all direct democracies to date uh, have been relatively small communities, usually city-states. City states. For example, um, you remember that in um, ancient Athens, yeah, uh, were some uh, city state, and in uh, such uh, small communities, of course, we can speak about direct democracy, yeah, because um, uh, some vote, yeah, can be absolutely. Uh, di directly from any citizens of these uh, uh, city states. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, limited direct democracy exists, for example, in some Swiss cantons. Yeah. Uh, because it's small, and of course, it can be such direct uh, democracy. Other current examples include many small civic organizations, uh, like, uh, for example, college faculties yeah, and uh, town meetings, uh, for example, uh, in New England. Um, and uh, the population of this uh, city or town, not city, town, yeah, mm, of these towns uh, can be under uh, 10,000. Um, all the citizens. Yeah, and that is why, of course, you can speak here about direct democracy and um, the process of uh, voting yeah, from uh, such uh, positions. Mm, next moment, um, I should say that direct democracy obviously becomes difficult when the electorate is large. Yeah, of course, it will be a bit uh, difficult. Uh, there are four uh, pillars of direct democracy. And here we can speak referendums, yeah, then uh, lawmaking initiatives, elections, and recall elections. Yeah. Do you remember what is referendums or referenda? Uh, we can use uh, these two words. Uh, what is this? Uh, you know, but you can't explain. Yeah. When, uh, some process, yes. When the government wants to change something. Yeah. And, uh, and risk. Something and they should uh, vote change it or not. Yeah, you have to be right initiated by government, mm -hmm. yeah, or legislatures, uh, or by citizens responding to legislation and the lawmaking initiatives. It's some uh, initiative, yeah, uh, from citizens initiated by citizens, yeah. Oh, elections and recall elections, I think uh, you know what is in elections, but what is recall elections are a form of dismissal of public officers by request of electors. Yeah. Uh, some liberal democracies uh, have elements of direct democracy, such as referenda and plebiscite. Yeah, referenda and plebiscite. And for example, Switzerland and Uruguay are some examples. And uh, likewise, several states of the United States, uh, many other countries have referenda to a lesser degree in uh, their political system. Okay, I think you remember now what is direct democracy uh, or just... Uh, uh, you uh, maybe you uh, knew yeah this idea, but now you just remember about this idea. And representative, yeah. Next type. 
uh, the democracy representative democracy and here um, the representative uh, democracy is named uh, so because uh, the people elect representatives uh, to a governing body and representatives may be chosen by electorate as a whole yeah um and uh, represent a particular district or a constituency. Uh, when uh, uh, we are speaking about the electorate as a whole, yeah, um, it can be in a proportional system, yeah, as in proportional system. And uh, when we're trying to speak about the represent a particular district, uh, district district yeah constituency like district yeah um some uh the example can be some states uh, in the united states of america yeah uh and uh here uh we can speak uh, about the majority system yeah uh i hope that you remember this term again proportional and majority system yeah proportional and majority and in ukraine uh do you remember yeah we have mixed yeah uh system <laughs> and again uh, you can speak about proportional majority system yeah okay some systems use a combination of course uh, of the proportional and majority systems and majority of representatives the de um, democracy uh, also incorporate some elements of direct democracy such as election and referendum okay <clears throat> we know this information and it's not so difficult uh, then um, next moment uh, i should say about uh, some scholars uh, and uh, some scholars argue uh, that uh, liberal democracy doesn't respect absolute majority rule except the electing uh, representatives and the liberty of uh, majority rule is restricted by the constitution where president uh, decides by previous generation also the real power is actually held by a relatively small representative body. Thus, the argument goes, uh, liberal democracy is merely a declaration over an oligarchy. Yeah, oligarchy. Uh, I think you can understand, yeah? I know what I mean. That is why a system of direct democracy would be uh, preferable. Uh, new, te new technology such as e-democracy, yeah, I, I think you heard this term, yeah, e-democracy. Yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, make, may make direct democracy easier to implement, yeah. And so uh, others uh, would say that only the liberal democracy can guarantee the individual liberties of its citizens and prevent the development into a dictatorship. Uh, and um, unmoderated majority would rule, uh, rule good uh, in this view lead to an oppression of minorities. And other argument is uh, that the elected leaders may be more interested and able than the average uh, voter and a uh, third um, argument is that direct democracy is ineffective uh, it takes much uh, effort and time uh, if everyone should together and discuss information and vote on, mo on most issues yeah, maybe we can <laughs> agree with this idea, yes, that uh, it can be ineffective. Uh, because if you will hear uh, the opinion of um, every uh, citizen, yeah, um, they will think uh, too long, what should we do, yeah? 
maybe. Uh, but uh, my opinion about the liberal democracy, I think it's good idea, yeah, for ruling uh, and for um, any democratic state. I think it's better than uh, illiberal democracy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it was our uh, first question. Uh, maybe you want to say something, no, about democracy. Everything is okay. All right. Perfect. Oh, good. It was understandable. It was not so difficult for understanding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and our next question. Do you remember what is our next question? Yeah, the origin and essence of uh, the rule of law. And I think it's again interesting uh, because it's too popular idea, yeah, uh, nowadays. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we can read many, many uh, sources uh, with this idea, so many articles about these ideas, yeah, and even um, a big. Um, um, uh, investigation uh, from uh, Professor uh, Galavati. Maybe you heard this uh, uh, surname. No? No? Uh, he wrote uh, 10 books about this idea. Yeah, rule of law in Ukraine. Uh, and it, of course, it was interesting, and it was an uh, interesting idea of the translation of the rule of law. For example, how can we translate the rule of law? Verkhovenstvo mm prava, -hmm. um, and Professor Galavati uh, translated pravovladja, the rule of law. Yeah, the rule of law. And I think it's uh, maybe better, yeah, even Verkhovenstvo uh, Prava. But, uh, of course, uh, the traditional translation, the uh, rule of law, yeah, Verkhovenstvo uh, Prava. Okay, so uh, the rule of law is a principle or even uh, maybe doctrine, yeah, and that uh, governmental authority is legitimately exercised only in accordance with the... What happened? I heard this sound too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Only in accordance with written, uh, publicly disclosed laws adopted and enforced in accordance with established procedure yeah so it's about laws yeah and it's about written laws and these laws should be right yeah and the principle uh is intended to, to be a safeguard against arbitrary governance so uh, a few words about uh, historical roots of uh, this idea, I think it will be interesting. In continental Europe, legal thinking, rule of law is associated with the legal state. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's it sounds <laughs> really something strange. Uh, sometimes um, our colleagues in Europe can you see the difference between two terms, the rule of law and legal state? And if you will, if you will think yeah, about these uh, two ideas, maybe you will not find the difference between this term too. Yeah, legal state and uh, rule of law. Uh, but uh, we have in our Ukrainian understanding the difference between these two terms. And I'll try to explain, yeah, because we will have the next, next question, one of the next questions about the legal state. So, uh, about the history of this idea, Leto and Aristotle yeah, uh, first defined uh, the contrast between 
rule of men and the rule of law. Rule of men and the rule of law. Uh, the latter uh, being uh, seen as separate and springing from the external and pure authority. Uh, the rule of law was defined by Aristotle as a system of rules inherent uh, in the natural order. Yeah, system of rules inherent in the natural order. I think it's interesting definition. Um, then uh, next philosopher, next scientist, uh, Samuel Rutherford. Samuel Rutherford was one of the first modern authors uh, to give the principal theoretical foundation uh, in his work with the name Lex. It was um, not so... Uh, <laughs> I think it's not so modern thinker, yeah, because it was in 1644, yeah, 1644. Uh, and later... Montesquieu, yeah, Montesquieu um, gives, uh, gave, I think it will be better to say, uh, gave some definition for this idea too. And it was in his book with the name The Spirit of the Laws. The Spirit of the Laws. How can we translate? Okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. Yeah, for Produkt Zakonev. And it was in 1748, 1748, a bit later, yeah, than um, Samuel Rutherford. Uh, so in the Anglo-American um, Anglo legal tradition, rule of law has been seen as a guard against despotism and as enforcing limitations of the power of the government. And uh, in American law, uh, the most famous exposition of the same principle was drafted by John Adams. John Adams, I think you heard this name, yeah, John Adams, uh, for the constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, he wrote uh, this um, constitution and uh, he said it may be a government of laws and not of men. Yeah. Uh, it's something like um, the sentence from uh, Aristotle, yeah, uh, from the ancient uh, Greece. And this idea um, uh, was uh, in was was exist yeah or uh, was formulated in uh, 1780 in 1780 okay yeah then mm, a similar a similar concept uh, is found uh, by uh, Thomas Paine Thomas Paine uh, it's famous uh, uh, philosopher and scientist um, and um, he um, uh, had uh, such book with the name uh, Common Sense, Common Sense, and it was in 1776. I'm quoting, I'm quoting uh, of this idea. Uh, I think it's interesting, and now you will understand the uh, uh, the roots of the ideas of the rule of law, yeah? Uh, Thomas Spain and uh, his definition, what is this? The world may know that so far as we approve of monarchy, that in America, the law is king. The law is king, yeah? Uh, for as in absolute government, the king is law. So in free countries, the law ought to be the king, uh, ought to be king, and there ought to be no other. Yeah. So uh, here we can understand uh, why uh, we uh, used such idea, the rule of law. Yeah. We can understand the uh, law as a king. 
yeah, uh, in the uh, society. Uh, then, in British law, in British law, the most famous exposition of the concept of rule of law was laid by Albert Van Van Dicey. Albert Van Dicey. And uh, uh, he wrote the book with the name Law of the Constitution. Law of the Constitution. And Dicey um, identified uh, three identified three principles uh, which together establish the rule of law. Uh, what are the principles? And the absolute supremacy of uh, regular law as opposed to the influence of arbitrary power. It was the first principle. Second, equality before the law or the equal subjection of all classes to the ordinary law of the land administered by the ordinary courts. Every official from the prime minister down to the constable is under the same responsibility for every act done without legal justification as any other citizens. Uh, then, a uh, third principle, the law of the Constitution is the consequences of the rights of individuals as defined and enforced by the courts. Mm, I think uh, it's a uh, um, famous ideas yeah famous principles uh, of uh, the rule of law then uh, next period uh, of the formation of this idea of the rule of law um, was in the uh, 20th century and it was in 1959 in 1959, an international gathering of over 185 judges and law professors from 53 countries meeting in New Delhi, meeting in New Delhi, and speaking as the International Commission of Jurists, International Commission of Jurists, made a declaration made a declaration as to the fundamental principles of the rule of law. Don't you hear about this fact? Mm -hmm. Now you are here, yeah? And the Delhi Congress gave rise to three important elements in the concept of the rule of law. So what are the uh, three important elements? The individual is possessed of certain rights and freedoms, and he is entitled to protection of these rights and freedoms by the state. I think I think it's understandable, yeah? Then, and there is an absolute need for an independent judiciary and bar, as well as for effective machinery, machinery for the protection of fundamental rights and freedoms, yeah? So, uh, here we can speak about the independent judiciary power or judicial power. Yeah. Then, the establishment of social, economic and cultural conditions would permit men to live in dignity and to fulfill their legitimate aspirations. Uh, don't you know some words here? What is dignity? Live in dignity. Hidnist. Uh, uh, and to fulfill their legitimate aspirations. Legitimate aspirations. Some legitimate ways. Yeah. Uh, legitimate initiatives. Pra mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in uh, his uh, speech on uh, November of uh, 16th of November uh, in uh, 2006, Lord Burnham of Cornhill uh, postulated eight, uh, eight even, <laughs> yeah, sub rules of the rule of law. Uh, so now you hear um, newer, yeah. Uh, 
ideas about the rule of law, and it was uh, in 2006. Yeah, um, maybe even uh, the newest yeah, ideas. Um, but of course, uh, we have uh, and other ideas now, but uh, the um, fundamental uh, ideas yeah, of the rule of law, I think, uh, was coined by Aristotle and Platt <laughs> and Vlad. Okay, so uh, what is the eight ideas? The law must be accessible and so far as possible intelligible, clear, and predictable. I think it's absolutely uh, understandable idea. Then, uh, questions of legal rights and liability should ordinarily be uh, resolved by application of the law and not the ex exercise of discretion. Then, the laws of the land should apply equally to all, save to, to the extent that objective differences justify differentiation. Uh, then, the law must afford adequate protection of fundamental human rights. I think uh, you can see uh, the link yeah, between the rule of law and the idea of human rights too. Uh, then, um, means uh, must be provided uh, to resolving without prohibitive uh, cost of inordinate delay. Uh, bona fide, or not bona fide, bona fide civil disputes which the parties themselves are unable to resolve. Uh, maybe you don't know uh, some words. Uh, what is uh, inordinate delay? Inordinate delay. What is delay? You know this word. Zatrimka, yeah? Inordinate delay, I think you know already, and bona fide, bona fide civil disputes, uh, So we gain these um, characteristics of um, some um, ideas of rule of law. Then, uh, ministers and public officers at all levels must exercise the power conferred on them reasonably in good faith uh, for the purpose for which the power were conferred and without exceeding the limits of such powers. Next moment, seventh, um, adjudicative procedure provided by the state should be fair. Yeah. Or justice, yeah, we can use this uh, uh, synonym here. And the state, uh, the last idea uh, from this, um, uh, I think, scientist. Uh, the state must comply with its obligation in international law, the law which whether deriving from treaty of in or international custom and practice governs uh, the uh, conduct of nations. Uh, I think you didn't hear uh, so many ideas about the rule of law <laughs> yeah, before. Uh, maybe just didn't hear about such historical, yeah. Um, ideas. I have uh, more information, but I think, uh, okay, I'll uh, send to you uh, the uh, text of the lecture and you read because I have the information about the United Nations uh, and the uh, some describing of the rule of law of United Nations. To, uh, but I think you can read yeah this information because I'm uh, I can uh, quoting only yeah.
these definitions. And here I want to say about European Commission. European Commission for Democracy uh, through Law. Yeah. And maybe you know the other name of this commission. European Commission for Democracy through Law. No? Venice. Venice Commission. Maybe you heard something about this Venetianska Commission. Of course. In Ukraine. And of course, yeah, Venice can commission. Yeah. So the European Commission for Democracy through um, law. And uh, in the report with the name on the rule of law, yeah, and this report um, was um, in uh, uh, 2011, yeah, 2011, and this report uh, drew definition uh, based on very different systems of law and um, a consensus was found for the necessary elements of uh, the rule of law. So uh, what is this? What is the necessary elements of the rule of law? I think it's very interesting and it's very, very important for the understanding of this principle of the rule of law. So first principle is legality legality yeah including a transparent accountable and uh, a democratic process for enacting law i'll not explain all of this principle i think you can understand yeah uh, how can we use this principle in the understanding of the rule of law then uh, next moment it's legal certainty legal certainty what is this legal certainty can you translate well, we don't know. <laughs> yeah uh certainty with wisnachinist wisnachinist yeah legal certainty yeah uh certainty t-a-i and you uh, why okay legal certainty requires uh, that legal rules are clear and precise yeah and aim and e ensuring that uh, situation and legal relationships remain uh forcible forcible uh okay mm, then prohibition of arbitrariness prohibition of arbitrariness um uh, can you translate prohibition maybe yes, yes. Uh, arbitrariness yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. prohibition of arbitrariness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not <laughs> only <laughs> because of me yeah because it's just European Commission of Democracy, yeah, and uh, I am just quoting, yeah, of these uh, words. What is quoting? Do you know? Oh, perfect, perfect. So, uh, prohibition of the arbitrariness, a bit difficult for pronunciation, yeah. So, although uh, discretionary power is necessary in some complex cases, such uh, power should be existed in a way that is arbitrary, uh, such exercise of power permits unfair, unreasonable, irrational, of or oppressive decisions which are inconsistent with the notion of rule of law. Next moment. It's access to justice. Access to justice. I think you can understand what is this, yeah? Access to justice. Really? Oh, perfect. Before independent and impartial courts, yeah? Uh, including judicial review or administrative acts. Then, next, uh, common idea of this uh, um venice commission uh, respect for human rights 
Yeah, and here I think I I shouldn't explain something. Yeah. Then uh, next moment, sixth and last, um, non-discrimination uh, and equality before the law. Yeah, non-discrimination and equality before the law. Uh, any unjustified, unequal treatment under the law is prohibited, and all persons have guaranteed equal and effect and effective protection against discrimination of any ground, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, um, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth on other stages. Yeah, and he, I think you heard. And equality before the law means that each individual is, is subject to the same laws with no individual or group having special legal privileges. Yeah. So I think uh, now you know what is the rule of law. And uh, we can turn to the next question. Yeah. And our next question, legal state. Yeah, legal state. Uh, the implementation of the principle of the rule of law into uh, governmental policy results in the legal state. Yeah, and even we said, yeah, about these links between legal state and uh, rule of law. And even we said uh, that in European country we can't uh, see any difference between these ideas, legal state and rule of law. Yeah, but now we'll try <laughs> to see some difference. And here I should say that the power of legal state is limited in order to protect citizens uh, from the arbitrary exercise of state authority. In the legal state, these citizens enjoy legally based civil liberties and they can use the court. Uh, and um, another moment, what happened? Again, yeah. <laughs> and a bit scary, yeah. Um, we all have uh, some problems <laughs> already <laughs> with our, our uh, psychological, maybe, yeah, um, moments. But it's normal, it's uh, uh, situation and the situation uh, with us. Uh, but okay, about legal state and um, uh, a country cannot be a liberal, yeah, even a uh, liberal de democracy without uh, uh, first being a legal state, yeah, because if the, the um, some country will not be legal state, we can't speak about the uh, legal democracy in this state even, yeah? And the most important principles of the legal state are, firstly, we said about the rule of law, yeah? Uh, so the state is based uh, on the supremacy of national constitution and exercises cohesion and guarantees the safety and constitutional rights of its citizens. Then, uh, and the next idea is very important idea, the idea of the civil society. Yeah, civil society. You know what is this? Yeah, and uh, civil society has sovereignty uh, upon the state. Yeah, in such state, in the legal state, of course, the civil society more important than state. Yeah, you will try uh, to uh, estimate the place yeah, of uh, state and civil society. Of course, the civil society should be at the first place. And then, uh, division of power. Yeah. This is the feature of uh, the uh, legal state. Uh, and uh, 
again, you should remember these names, yeah, of these uh, three uh, powers. Yeah. Okay, these are executive, legislative, mm -hmm. and judicial. What well, um, sometimes uh, we can uh, speak uh, judicative, mm -hmm. yeah, judicative power. It's okay. It's yeah, <laughs> judicative branches of government limiting each other power and providing for check and checks and balances. Yeah, don't forget about these ideas because uh it's not enough yeah uh just to uh have <laughs> yeah these three uh branches of powers i think it's very important uh, to be in some relations uh, between these three powers um and uh, these relations uh, should be in the way of the check and balances yeah okay uh, then, uh, next moment, the uh, judicature and executive are bound by law, yeah, um, and the legislature is bound by constitutional principles. Then, both the uh, legislature and democracy itself is bound by elementary, no, no, elementary constitutional rights and principles. Uh, and then uh, transparency of uh, state activity and requirement of reasoning for for all state acts. Uh, what is transparency? You know, maybe it's not understandable now. Transparency. No, prozorist. Uh -huh. Transparency, uh, uh, like transparent. Yeah. We can see all, <laughs> yeah, of this transparent. Uh, that is why transparency of the state activity, yeah, and the requirements of reasoning for all state acts. And then a uh, review of uh, state decisions and state acts by independent organs, including an appeal process. Then next characteristic hierarchy of laws. A requirement of clarity and definiteness. I think you know what is clarity and definiteness, yeah? Um, reliability of state actions. What is uh, reliability? I think you know again. No? Nadinist. Nadinist. Yeah, reliability of the state actions, protection of Last dispositions made in good faith against later state actions, prohibition of retroactivity. And then, uh, next uh, idea, principle of the proportionality of state action. Yeah, proportionality of state action, I think it's understandable. Then, uh, next moment, monopoly of the legitimate use of force. Yeah legitimate use of voice and uh, sometimes amended uh, to monopoly on the legitimate initiation of force uh, or monopoly uh, on the legitimate use of aggressive force yeah i mean initiation of voice and use an aggressive le legitimate from one side, like legitimation of some voice, yeah, and from the other side, use the aggressive voice. And here I should say about uh, two um, ideas uh, of uh, this um, using of the voice, yeah, or using or legitimation. Uh, from two famous philosophers, um, and the name of this philosopher, names of this philosopher is John Locke and Thomas Hobbes. John Locke and Thomas Hobbes. Don't you hear? Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. And uh, um, we have used um, even um, <laughs> very interesting words here. Uh, Lockean and Hobbesian ideas. 
yeah or Lockean method and Hobbesian method and uh, a Lockean uh, method it's like a um, an agency contract agency contract uh, and Hobbesian method alienation contract uh, don't you know why uh, because the idea of Hobbes uh, were about the Mm, person to person uh, like an alliance yeah do you know what is uh, who is alliance no no a lie it's not uh, like union it's war war mm -hmm. uh, uh, people for people uh as a uh, wolf yeah mm -hmm. as wolf it's hopes ideas okay uh and that is why we can use the initiation of voice yeah and we can use uh, the idea of aggressive voice for hopes yeah it's absolutely normal to use uh okay do you want to check something <laughs> Ah, yeah, you are absolutely right. You do check it. Alliance, yeah, ah, yes, yes, yes. Alliance and alliance, yeah. Do you mean this? Okay, I can understand you. Uh, so. Um, I think now uh, you know something about legal state or maybe uh, again you heard something and now you just uh, repeat yeah in your mind these ideas about legal state and a big link uh, between legal state and rule of law and i think we can turn to the next question with the name welfare state yeah welfare state i think it will be interesting <laughs> and i should say that welfare state uh is the english term english term and the, this english term welfare state was coined by art arc bishop william temple who is archbishop archiepiscop mm -hmm. <laughs> archbishop uh, william temple during the second world war um, and uh, he compared welfare state of britain with a warfare state in Nez nazi germany yeah, welfare and warfare. Uh, there are three main interpretations of the idea of welfare state. And um, what are these ideas? Uh, the provision of welfare uh, services by state. Yeah. Next idea, the state refs responsibility for the welfare of, the, of its citizens. And next idea, the provision of welfare in society. Yeah. In many welfare states, especially in uh, continental Europe, welfare is not actually provided by the state, but by a combination of independent, voluntarily, mutual and government services. Uh, the concept of the welfare state remains controversial and uh, there is continuing debate over government's responsibility for their citizens' welfare. So, uh, of course, we can speak about some advantages uh, and disadvantages uh, about the welfare state. Um, and maybe you know something about these advantages and disadvantages. Can you say something or not? no no you you uh, can't okay um i'll say about disadvantages and uh, disadvantages because i think it's interesting i think 
you can mm, think in such a way that uh, disadvantages will first stay. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we can speak about any disadvantages of the welfare state, but yes, you can uh, speak about these disadvantages. But firstly, arguments in favor of the welfare state, and um, these arguments are the following. Uh, firstly, humanitarian. Yeah, humanitarian. Uh, this is the rights, uh, right uh, to the basic necessities of life is a fundamental human rights and people shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be allowed to suffer uh, unnecessarily uh, through lack of provision yeah and i think it's a uh, good uh, describing yeah, of, uh, of this welfare state then welfare state should be democratic of course yeah democratic then welfare state it's ethical reciprocity ethical reciprocity or a fair exchange yeah and did you understand me uh ethical reciprocity is nearly universal as a moral principle yeah i mean fair exchange yeah justice justice exchange then uh next feature uh altruism altruism yeah why because helping others um in a moral obligation in most cul uh, cultures charity and support for people who cannot help themselves are also widely thought to be moral choices then utilitarian utilitarian what is this uh the same amount of money will produce greater happiness in the hands of a less well-off person than if given to a well-off person thus redistributing wealth from the rich to the poor will increase the total happiness in society yeah. then religious religious most major words uh, word, uh, world religions emphasize the importance of uh, social organization rather than uh, personal development alone and religions obligations include the duty of charity and the obligations for uh, solid obligation for solidarity and so on yeah that is why of course it's some uh, feature and um argument in favor of the existence of uh, the welfare state then uh, next moment mutual self-interests mutual self-interest uh, here we can speak about several national systems have uh, developed voluntarily through uh, by growth of mutual insurance and then economic uh, social uh, market failure uh economies of scale and the anti-criminal even yeah what about arguments against the welfare state and uh, these arguments are following a moral compulsion what is this Liber libertarians believe that the nanny state nanny state yeah do you know what is this nanny nanny the derzava yak nyanka aha nini state uh infringes upon individual freedom forcing the individual to uh, subsidies the consumption of others uh they argue the social spending reduces the right of individuals to transfer some of their wealth to others then uh religious uh but here um these arguments uh said about uh, patern paternalism paternalism yeah the state shouldn't be like a father yeah uh for all uh citizens uh then efficiency uh it's not so uh good for many many uh people 
motivations uh, motivation and incentives. I think it's very interesting moment. The welfare state may have undesirable effects on behavior, fostering dependency, destroying incentives, and sapping motivation to work. Yeah, mm, I think it's it's interesting and even true. I uh, think in uh, such way about the uh, welfare state too. Okay, I'll give you again the lecture, yeah, and you read about some criticism and uh, not criticism, <laughs> yeah. And if you don't any questions, we will do a little break. <laughs> Вам скинуть ее в Телеграм или самому заходить в Телеграм с компьютера и скидывать ее на как на. Может лучше в Зуме. А как вы скажете? В Зуме. As usual.